Hello, I'm Atuba George. Now, we've been talking about how to understand the voice of God and how to know that God is speaking to you. Now, um, a few days ago, the Lord was speaking to me about something very important. I, sh I shared um, a bit of it, I think two weeks ago or last week. In a way, the book of Samuel, chapter 3, the Bible says the word of God was scarce. Samuel chapter 3, verse 1. First Samuel chapter 3 and verse 1. The Bible said the word of God was scarce in those days. Now, the Lord asked me a question. He says, why, why do you think the word, of, the word was scarce? Now, the word of God was scarce not because the scroll was missing or not because the scroll was hidden. No. You see, the, the scroll has always been there for the priest and the high priest to, for, in their custody. It was never available for everybody. So why would the Bible specifically now say that the word of God was scarce in those days? It's not the scroll he was referring to. He was talking about people. We are, we are not saying in those days that, oh, do you know what the Lord spoke to me? Or people were not coming by, by, by prophecy to say, does say yes, the Lord. That wasn't happening then. That's what the scripture meant by the word of God was scarce. See? So it, it, it wasn't happening then. See, so Samuel, for example, was living in Eli's house, but the word of God was not revealed to him. Not because he didn't know the law, he was taught the law. But you see, the word of God was still not revealed to him because the law was not the word of God. You need to understand that. The law was commands that God gave to them. Now, the fact that you know God's command doesn't mean you know his word. Oh, you need to catch this. You need to catch this. To know God's word means to know his mind, to know his, his, his heart. Now, when you know his heart, you, you are not going to be living your life based on certain laws and commandments. You, you understand what I'm saying? So you're not going to be living your life by the don'ts. Don't do, don't do, don't do. Okay, you know God said so we should not do this. So, ah, I'm afraid. Though. I don't want to do it. It doesn't mean you know God. It doesn't mean you know God. Anyway, the, the, the Spirit of God was talking to me and he said, Look, why was the word of God scarce in those days? And I began to think about it because I know what it meant when he says the word of God was scarce. I began to think about it and then the Lord said to me, He said, Be careful not to make the word of God scarce in your time. And I said, Yes, that's true. And that's why I'm teaching you what I'm teaching you now. See, see, how do we make the word of God scarce? Because let me tell you the truth. To a great extent, even today, in many circles, the word of God is scarce. You say, you know, you mean today that we have Bibles everywhere, we have Bibles on our phones, we have Bibles. I mean, I mean, you almost everybody. You, say, you, know, you know, these days we don't even carry the half copy Bible like this one to church anymore. You know, we, we just go with our phones, with our iPads and, and tablets and, and just you know, open your Bible so oh, quickly. And then, we, we, you know, you, you don't even search. You don't even know. You know, those days, you want to know from Genesis to uh, Revelation, you know, the chapters and how it's chron chronologically arranged. But these days, no, I mean, just get your tab, you know, and type it there, and then the, the scripture comes up. And then, fine, it makes things a lot easier. But that's not the word of God. That's the Bible. So you can have all those things going on and yet the word of God is scarce. How? Because no one is speaking about what the spirit of God is saying today to him. Now that's why in the book of Revelation it says, He that has an ear, let him do what? Let him hear what the spirit is saying to the church. So what's he talking about? He that has an ear, let him hear the word of God. Praise God. Now, the Lord reminded me of something that happened, you know, some time back. And, and, and it buttressed what he was saying to me. And, you know, one day I was with my children, you know, the three of them, they were with me. The mom was out, so they were just with me in, my, in, in, our, in our room. And we were just, you know, having fun together. And then suddenly, my daughter Zuriel left us and you know, just went out of the room. And then for a while, I didn't see her. And I was just wondering, I, I felt maybe she went to use her bathroom or something. So, but after a while, I didn't see her. So I just thought to check up on her to know where, where she is and what she's doing. So I went across her, their, their, to their room 
and the door was open so i just saw her fixing up her room you know i saw her arranging her bed move the mattress up and was actually sweeping as well as just five years old moving you know the the dirt under the mattress in her bed and then I, I like, Zura, what's, what's going on? I said, oh, I'm cleaning my room. I said, oh, that's, that's very nice. That's very nice. And then, you know, I was just watching her and wondering, you know, what's going on here. I, of course, I liked it. And then I said, okay, well done, okay. Do you need help? He said, no. I said, okay, if you need any help, would you tell me? He said, yes. And then as I turned to leave, Zura said to me, he said, Dad, do you know why I'm cleaning my room? I said, no, I want to know. He said, because... God told me to come and clean my room. I said, God told He said, yes. He said, when, when I was in your room, Je this was her word. He said, when I was in your room, Jesus said to me, Zuriel, go and clean your room. I said, oh, that's why you left my room. He said, yes. I said, wow. You know, so <laughs> then I began to say, you know what? That's exactly how you respond when you hear Jesus. You don't, you don't negotiate it. You just obey him. And because you've obeyed him, he's going to bless you. Now, that left a deep impression in my heart. I was excited in my heart. I mean, I couldn't wait for my wife to get back to share with her. Now, now what am I saying to you? So there's, now, on this day, a few days ago, the Spirit of God was reminding me something. And he told me, say, you remember that day with your daughter? I said, yes. He said, the reason it was easy to hear my voice, and the Lord talking to me, is because you have not made the word of God scarce in your home. And I began to think about it. Now, not because we did this consciously, but it's just our way of living, you know. Our children know when God speaks to us. So we, we share it with them. Say, you know what the Lord just told me? You know what the Holy Spirit just told me? And then we share these things with them. So they, they are conscious that God speaks. And they desire that God, we don't force it on them. They desire that God speaks to them. Now, when she heard, now how did she know that that was the Lord that spoke to her? See, because she already knows that God speaks. Now, I'm sharing this with you because it is the instruction the Lord gave to me. You, don't let the word of God to be scarce in your home. Now, that's where it starts from. Don't wait for the church to give you the word of God. No, 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 no. Don't wait for that. Let the word of God be flowing freely in your home, flowing freely in your mouth. And listen. The kind of children we are raising in these last days, trust me, the devil will look for where to hide himself. Praise God. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to continue. I'm just going to continue from here tomorrow. Praise God. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.